Good morning and uh, welcome. Thanks for not supposed to be going down at that. Good morning and uh, welcome here to uh, morning worship. Sorry about that. The camera's uh, a bit funny. I'm back on the laptop today. Um, uh, it's my my laptop is now my own again, uh, at least for the moment, as Lily has returned to school. So it's all very quiet in here. Uh, here in in Chateau Tidy, um, um, albeit very windy outside, very blustery out there today. I hope you've been able to, uh, if you've been able to get outside, I hope you managed to keep your hat on. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, and your plans go outside later, uh, I hope uh, you stay safe uh, and enjoy the um, brisk breeze that we're blessed with today. And just a, a couple of quick notices, uh, there will be Compline this evening at 9 o'clock uh, in around about 12 hours time, so uh, it would be great to, to welcome you to that if you so wish. Um, morning prayer tomorrow, morning prayer Saturday and, uh, and then our, our worship all together on Sunday. I think that might be it for notices at the moment. It was great to see so many people yesterday at the uh, Lent group, and uh, it's, it's a real joy and it's a real blessing to be able to come to this together at this time when we are um, when we are apart. Um, PCC at uh, Stratton and South Marston um, have been discussing about when we we would go going back into the, our buildings, and Alvin and I have been discussing that as well so it's, it's an ongoing discussion we're unlikely to get the government saying oh you can go back because actually um, we've not been told that we have to close it's been very discretionary but probably wise um, so we're able to create our own roadmap you might say and that's in the process uh, even when we do go back, a little bit like previous times, we will uh, endeavour, this will continue, and we will endeavour to um, uh, continue our online services on a Sunday, um, so that people can join in um, online. I hope you have uh, your stone or your card um, still. Uh, I hope you have the liturgy in front of you. Um, let's have a moment of quiet as we recognise that we are in Almighty God's uh, wonderful presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, 
and righteous in your judgment, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Go to you Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, excuse me, let's start again, I'll try and get the proper words out using proper English. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfils his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me, and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake my soul, awake harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples, I will sing your praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair, and give us with, your, with all your people a song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. If you would like to read the Old Testament reading this morning, it is Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, all of it, <laughs> no verse numbers today. We are going to uh, move down to our canticle, uh, and um, hmm, I'm going to use canticle number 20 today. So I've clicked on my little blue hyperlink, the blue link, um, it's on the app. Sure, it'll be on the website as well. If you've got the book, it's on page 570. The word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew. 
as the gentle rains on the grass, and as the showers upon the meadow. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just. A faithful God without deceit, just and upright is he. His degenerate children have dealt corruptly with him, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Remember the days of old. Consider the years long past. Ask your father and he will show you, your elders and they will tell you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided the children of the earth, he fixed the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of God. For the Lord's own portion is his people, Jacob his allotted heritage. He sustained him in the desert land. In the howling waste of the wilderness he shielded him and cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings take, takes them and bears them aloft in its, on its pinions, so that a Lord alone guide him, and no foreign God was with him. Excuse me, so the Lord alone did guide him, and no foreign God was with him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. So as we have those first few verses of that canticle um, ringing in our ears, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as the gentle rain on the grass, and as the showers upon the meadow. As those ring in our ears, we now turn to our Gospel reading from John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 47. John, chapter 8, 31 to 47. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by the saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sins is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, the slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place for you in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in, my, in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? Is it because you cannot accept my word? You are from the father, the, you are from the, your father, the devil, and you choose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, 
for he is a liar and a father and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is from God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forthright uh, discussions. And these were the, these, these are the Jews who believed in Jesus. And I guess what they're trying to do is is to seek that understanding. They are asking difficult questions, but they're in a very difficult position. They're in a position of of having to it's a revolution in their minds of everything that they have grown up with. They have to change their idea of of God and his ways. And Jesus answers these forthright questions with forthright responses. And I'm going to use uh, the reflections, and this time they are, uh, they were the other day, from Graham James. He, the devil, is a liar and the father of lies. Jesus charges some of his fellow Jews not with not following Abraham, but doing the bidding of the devil and father of lies. His, his words were employed by the Nazis to demonise all Jews. Yet John's Gospel is clear that there were many Jews who believed in Jesus. Jesus declares that his real opponent, a real opponent is the devil, a great deceiver who appears to be telling the truth when he is lying and leads people to perdition. The Greek word for devil, diabolos, means slanderer. The law of slander in most countries countries applies at the most serious end of false accusation. The alternative translation, backbiter, brings it a bit closer to our own behaviours. Once I heard someone render Diablos as fault-finding spirit. Few of us seem to be a, few of us seem to avoid fault finding fault finding. We tend to find fault behind people's backs a very different thing from constructive criticism. Sometimes we do it just to make ourselves feel superior, but it is destructive of trust and truth. We are much more likely to see the speck of dust in someone else's eye while ignoring the boulders in our own. Jesus speaks of the devil as the father of lies. He also speaks about the truth setting us free. What about making this a day, or even a week, of uh, free of fault finding? If we escape the clutches of the father of lies, we will travel on the way to the truth, which sets us free. Turn your will for us, to give up what harms us perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, Pippa is sat on my lap at the moment. She's been asleep uh, on my chair uh, just over the corner there. Oh, where my finger is pointing. You can see the cushion is in a V shape. It's actually not really a V shape. It's more of a Pippa shape. And right up until about one minute. So um, she really does know what's going on, and she also has a, a, a penchant for sitting on laptops at the moment, and um, which is not very helpful if you're trying to use it. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 
O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. I just have a cup of tea somewhere, but I've left it somewhere, but so uh, the slurp will have to wait. We come to our time of prayer and uh, continue our time of prayer with our intercessions. And today we are going to, um, excuse me, um, we're going to use the um, Thursday, excuse me, there we go, that's what I wanted, that's what I needed. We're going to use the blessings that we have done on the Thursday for, the, for a number of years now. Speaking of blessings into our team and across our communities comes from the Bible, which tells us that when we speak over, over people and seek blessings over people, God responds. So claiming the promises of God's word, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer and Saviour. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us, and in his name we speak to every household, every home, and every person in our communities. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your relationships that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household, within each family, that there may be peace love, understanding and um, good health and protection flowing between each one. And where, dear Father, there is peril, we pray, dear Father, for deliverance and safety and a knowledge of your peace and love. In Jesus' name we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health, that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name, 
we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade these communities. And to every person we say be well, be strong, be healthy in body, mind or spirit. To any who are suffering right now we say we bless you in Jesus name for a speedy and full recovery and the knowledge of his constant presence and love. We lift all on our hearts dear Lord this day who are struggling. And we name out loud just some of them and you might even like to name out loud in your own homes those who are in your heart. Dorinda, Trudy, Jackie, Peg, Julie, Lizzie, Mark, Dennis, Christine, Addy, William, Pauline, Linda, Roy, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George, Bob, Mary, Bex, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Andrew, Kath, David, Leslie, Wendy, Jim, Joe and the family, Natalie, John, Janet, Arthur, Carol and Inca, E and D, Annette, Tony, John, Liz, Dave and the family, and Daniel. Again, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy recovery. We bless those in the autumn of their lives and all those who live and work in residential care. We pray that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name, we pray they will have assurance and hope for the future. As well as those in, our, in nursing homes and sheltered accommodation and care homes, we, we pray for those who are in domiciliary care and for those who are housebound. We pray for uh, God's blessings to be upon them. And we speak blessings of patience, protection, wisdom, love and compassion to all carers and associated staff. At this time of economic strain, we bless the wealth of every person in our communities, that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands, that whatever you turn your hand to, which is wholesome, may be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise conducted by you, that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds, that they will flourish, and employee-employer relationships will be wholesome, fair, and full of integrity. We bless our local nurseries, preschools, schools, colleges and universities, using local in its most broadest of terms. 
we pray that they make us secure and safe for teachers and students and young people alike, especially at this uh, time of risk of the virus. We bless the young people's capacity to learn and develop relationships at this most testing of times. We lift before you, dear Father, all those young people who are on our hearts, whether they are close to us or whether they are far away. And again, we name just some of them. Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Amir. We live before you, Heather, Anne Marie. Oh, excuse me, get back to those in a moment. I'm confused. May they feel your presence this day and always, dear Father. And may they grow knowing you, being strong in character and strong in faith. And we bless all staff at schools and in administration. And we pray that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And we pray for their protection and we pray for their resilience and strength this day, dear Father. We live before you, Marie and Heather, Sarah, Matthew, Asher, Rebecca, Chris, Joshua, Sue, Michael, Susan, Nick, Lisa and Noel. We pray for all blessing, a blessing on all contact the church has with schools, colleges and universities and preschools in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, carers, staff of Sandalwood Court, all those that work in our surgeries, hospitals, um, vaccination centres, clinics, test centres, laboratories, um, all those that work within our health system, dear Father, we give you thanks for them. And we bless them. We pray, dear Father, for your blessing on them as they minister to people, that they may have protection, wisdom, guidance, energy, inspiration, gentleness and understanding for their patience. We pray for the emergency services as they operate within our bounds and across our communities. We pray that they will be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. We bless those working in our fire, police and ambulance stations across our town, especially on a day like today, which may be challenging and may have a variety of different call outs to accidents and to things that go on during these <clears throat> blustery conditions. We do indeed pray for their safety, protection and wisdom. We pray for our local parish and borough, parish councils, our borough council and indeed our national government and we pray that they will be blessed as they serve their communities, that they may be guided as they seek the best for them and look towards the future with wisdom and understanding. We pray for those, those in uh, response, areas of responsibility, whether they be elected members 
or those working um, for governments. Pray that they make decisions based on righteousness and justice and in their own way, like we all should be doing, looking to bring your kingdom to earth. We pray, dear Father, for those on whom we depend for our daily needs. We pray for those who work in our public sector, for those who work in our health um, protection systems, for those who work in public health, for those who are working uh, to look to support others for those who work in social care and we lift before you Claire, Susanna and Pete. We pray dear Father that they will uh, they will have that protection and wisdom and understanding for those in their care. We speak to all the Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the Kingdom of God may fall upon you. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up for joy, but first he suffered pain. Excuse me, let me start that again. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up for joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, in whichever version you feel most comfortable with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today and um, I do hope you have a good day uh, in front of you. Uh, I hope you stay safe and well and I hope you feel God's blessings in all that you do. Uh, I've got a very mischievous cat uh, who is dying to sit on the laptop at the moment and I know if she pressed a button uh, I'm not sure what would happen. Uh, I think she might break the internet. Well that's the fear anyway. Um, so I'm sure that as soon as I press the button to stop it, to end the live video, uh, she will be again trying to get on the laptop um, and making her presence felt. I also know that she will be back on her cushion in a moment, sound asleep, um, enjoying her not quite um, 40 winks, but more like 40,000 winks. So, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless and I might see you this evening at Compline. button to end the live video doesn't seem to want to work. So I'm going to keep trying.